If you would please rise and join me in the presenting of the colors. And I would ask the class president to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, round of applause. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Please be seated, everybody. Again, thank you for being here. Um, thank you to those people that are watching us and, um, on the internet and everything else. And thank you so much for the families that are here today. I'm Deputy Scott Johnson. I happen to be serving right now as the acting sheriff for Ada County. And in participating, like I said a minute ago, in these uh, ceremonies is just very meaningful and impactful for us. We expect our employees to work here 25, 30 years. This is the opening kind of ceremony to a long and fulfilling career in public service. And it means a lot to us that you would join us for that, um, for that today. Um, we do our very best to select the very best people we can find. It's very difficult to get hired here. Um, you know, the current stats, I think, are about 2 to 3% of the people that apply actually get a job. So you are in very great company when you come to work here. And it's not easy to come to work here. We know that. Um, but we certainly appreciate all your time and effort for being here. And I can't say this enough, and I've already said it a couple of times, the support of your family and friends is going to be um, just invaluable to you during your career. It's a stressful job. Um, it is a stressful job, and it, sometimes you need to come home and relax, and sometimes you need to come home and vent, and sometimes you need to come home and say, you know what, I'm going to go read a novel in the backyard. Um, but behind all of that is the support of your family and friends, and so thank each and every one of you for being here. So We were going to move forward. Uh, Andrea Dearden is the Director of Communications for us, and she runs the Dispatch Center, and she'll have a few words. Thank you, Andrea. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very, very much for being here. We love these graduation days. It's kind of a midpoint, I guess is how I see it, um, of these new dispatchers getting ready to um, go out onto the floor uh, and onto the floor, that sounds funny for anybody who doesn't work in dispatch, but uh, out from moving from the classroom onto that, into that in job, in the job training. So much preparation goes into this and really you have spent the last weeks understanding a lot about who we are, what we do, and how we do what we do, and that really is what creates our culture, and that's something that is incredibly important to me and to all of us here at the Ada County Sheriff's Office because we believe strongly that that's what sets us apart. There are law enforcement agencies in every community, sometimes multiple agencies in a community like here in Ada County, and so it is very important for us to make sure that we do set ourselves apart and we actually live our vision to be the, the uh, agency of choice meaning that people can trust us. People do choose to turn to us for help because we know that oftentimes when someone calls dispatch, calls 911, it is in, a, in the worst moment. They're in crisis, they need help, and they simply cannot manage the situation alone. And so they're turning to us and asking us to please, please um, help them. And the way that we do that is incredibly important. The first most important step initially is to pick the right people, who we are. And so I often uh, don't get to meet our new dispatchers until my first time talking to them and, and working with them in a classroom. So I get to see these, in this case, four unique individuals that I know are the best of the best because of our hiring standards. And I get to start to learn the uniqueness of each of them and what makes them special and what, what they bring into the job. And then I get to start to see them really interact with each other 
and the way that they have, the way that they talk in discussions, the way they talk through some of their lessons, you start to see why they were selected and why we know uh, that they really are going to help us to live our mission, to make safer places to live, work, and play, and that they're going to do it in a way that uh, meets our values, service, attitude, integrity, dedication. Those aren't just buzzwords for us. Culture is not just a buzzword. It is everything about who we are. It is ultimately our promise to the community. It's our promise to ourselves. And it's our promise to each other, the people that we work alongside uh, each day. And we take that in, in very, very seriously. I've appreciated the time with each of you graduates uh, in the last few weeks, learning about you. You all bring different levels of experience, different life experience. Um, some of you have grown up in this community. Others just got here and are starting to, to learn the ways of Ada County. And to see you uh, really, truly embrace this, uh, this calling and this, uh, this service is impressive. And to see how you do that has been really, really fun to watch. So I am excited about watching you move from the lesson part and watching you put that into action because I, I know that each one of you is going to be incredibly impressive. So I appreciate you being part of what we do and look forward to the growth and the excitement that is, is ahead for you. So one of the things that we do, we talk about promise, one of the um, most symbolic things that we do here is take an oath of office. Every single person is sworn in as a deputy here at the Ada County Sheriff's Office. And so I'm going to ask um, our class president to please uh, bring the, the, your fellow classmates on stage to take the oath of office. All right, please raise your right hand and recite after me. I do solemnly swear or affirm, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I shall support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution and laws of the state of, Idaho. of the state of Idaho. I will earn the respect of others, I will earn the respect of others by being ethical, by being ethical and professional at all times. At all times. I pledge to carry out my duties. I pledge to carry out my duties to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And to bring honor to and to bring honor to the Ada County Sheriff's Office. The Ada County Sheriff's Office. And to myself. And to myself. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Excellent. Something else we do with um, each of the academies is to ask the students to select a class president. And um, that happens um, kind of through a, a process. They get to decide how they select, select their leader, the person that they turn to. Oftentimes, the person they turn to for wisdom, that they turn to for support, that they know is going to um, kind of be the person they look to, kind of what you would expect from a class president. When I saw the person that they selected, um, it didn't surprise me at all. So Darlene Ford is our class president, and I think it was just last week that I walked into a, a class, and I was pretty frazzled, and I came with lots of, of um, stories and <laughs> sharing about my uh, exciting morning with my teenage daughter. It was fun. It was fun. Fun morning. Uh, and I happened to be teaching uh, verbal defense and influence, or de-escalation skills, and I was very honestly saying, I don't always get it right. I'm not always perfect at what I do, and I remind them that I'm, I'm always talking to myself, not, not talking at you, I'm, I'm talking with you about some of these skills that we learn. And Darlene came to me after the class, and she just said, I just want you to know I've been there, and it's gonna be okay. And I get emotional talking about it, because it really did show me that what it is, it's about care. It's about, it's about what matters to us most, and that's the people that we work alongside. So we don't just say, please help take care of each other. We actually do it. And, and Darlene showed that in that one moment, and it meant the world to me, because I knew that, OK, I'm OK. right? We're going to be OK. It, it's, uh, and that's something that they will go through day in and day out. 
you will have rough moments. You will have difficult times. You won't be perfect, right? None of us are. Um, you're, you'll get teary, and Darlene and I share that too. So I hope that she's crying right now too because it makes me feel better. Um, and we're not going to be angry about it, right? Okay, good. Uh, so uh, she really does epitomize uh, what we say is so important, and she has, we say, show me, don't tell me, and she, she lives that. So I want to invite our class president, Darlene Ford, to come up and to address your class. Her making me cry was not part of the plan. Just going to put that out there. Um, good morning, uh, and thank you for being here this morning. As she said, my name is Darlene Ford, and I would like you to welcome you to the Ada County family. Um, I know Chief Johnson mentioned that you know we need the support of our families, but what you probably didn't realize is when each of us took that oath, we're dragging you right with us, and you are now part of that law enforcement family um, that's so integral to what we do. Um, the four of us were welcomed to the Ada County family by Chief Johnson on April 19th. He brought us into his office, and in true patriarch form, he expressed his pride in his family. He introduced us to the values that Andrea mentioned of integrity, service, dedication, and attitude. After administrating the oath of office, he advised us that he would provide us with all the tools that we needed so that we could have a successful career and then hopefully go on to a happy and healthy retirement. That was the ultimate goal. Um, then he sent us on his way and he said, good luck. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, you're all now part of that family. So there's no more sitting on the sidelines. When we celebrate, we're gonna drag you right there with us. You're gonna celebrate our victories. And when we're hurting, you're going to cry right along with me and Andrea. <laughs> so um, that being said, I'd like to introduce you to some of the newest members of the Ada County family. Um, the youngest um, person of our group is Tanea Owens. Um, she came to Ada County with no previous law enforcement experience. Um, one of my first impressions of her was Early on, we had to do a scenario, and she was tasked to be suicidal. And I was going to save her. I was going to be the call taker, and it was going to be a good day. And we were about two minutes into it, and she's like, you know, I can't do this. I am too happy a person. I don't know how to be suicidal. And I mean, that's how she tells the story. Um, my version of, of it is, I saved her, OK? And we went on. We prospered. Um, but seriously, I've watched Tanea grow into a more self-confident woman. Um, she has attacked this in every sense of the word. Um, she's eager to jump in and try to save the world. So I think she exemplifies our core value of attitude. She's nailed it. Um, next is Katie Molnick. Um, like Tanea, she also came to Ada County with very limited law enforcement experience. She is second generation law enforcement, so um, kudos to the Molnix family. Um, I got to ask you guys, though, does she ever stop asking questions? <laughs> Never. Okay. Um, she asked a lot of questions during this academy, and when I say a lot, um, instructors, uh, a lot, okay? But trust me, her, her tenacity or tendency to ask questions, that's her gift. It really is. Um, she exemplifies our core value of integrity. Because not only is she going to ask all of our customers all the right questions so that they are properly served, but she's also going to be questioning senior staff. And she's going to watch to make sure that that integrity is maintain maintained. She's just not going to go along. So I consider her to be an up and coming pillar of this department and for her coworkers. Um, she's going to maintain that integrity and she's going to guide us on the path to become the agency of choice for criminal justice services. 
Next is Maureen Smith, who uh, comes to Ada County with eight years of experience from working in both Oregon and Idaho as a dispatcher. My first impression of Maureen um, was right off the bat. I think we were, it was the first time we'd been over to the Pine or the main comm center. Um, she walked right in that first morning and she handed each of us this little cozy thing. And she had actually taken the time to put the outline and create one for uh, Communications 911. And it might seem like it's such a small, you know, simple thing, but to me, it showed, here's a team player. I mean, she's met with three other people that she's never met before, and she immediately walked in the room and said, all right, we're a team, and we're gonna tackle this. Um, you know, it's hard, to have somebody like that in your in your group and think that you're gonna fail because you always know she's got your back. She's gonna be there for you. Um, her approach to her new position and coworkers, she's routinely showing all of us what it means to go above and beyond um, for the sake of the team. And I personally really appreciate that. Um, there isn't a day that goes by that Maureen doesn't demonstrate our core value of service. Um, to be honest, with my background, um, I see her only flaw is she seems to have this favoritism towards firemen. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't get that personally, you know, but her husband, Matt, who's a N Nampa fireman, he seems to be okay with it. I don't know. Um, you might have noticed that I am like a year or two older than uh, these ladies, but it, it really has been a privilege and an honor to train with them. Um, I started my career in 19, okay, let's just say that Tanea is younger than when I started, okay? So um, with all the events of the past year, I get asked multiple times, why haven't you retired? Why, why are you still here? Um, no matter what your politics are, it's hard not to get excited about an agency that strives to make safer places for everyone to live, to work, and to play. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done. Um, I've dedicated to this agency and to its vision and its mission, and more importantly, its values. So in closing, Chief Johnson, you kept your word. You, you gave us the, the tools that we needed, and we're gonna be successful enforcing those values. Um, there's a, a saying that says, if you do something right in law enforcement, nobody remembers. But if you do something wrong, everybody remembers. Well, Chief, I wanna present to you Academy Number Seven. We are going to be the most forgettable Academy you've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, be safe out there with the heat, and thank you for coming. Well, I wanna say a couple more things um, real quickly before I introduce the next section of our program. One, welcome aboard, youngster, because I started in the 80s, so there you go. <laughs> we don't get where we're at in the kind of training that we provide without having trainers, without somebody that coordinates everything that goes into this class. These are not sit down for two or three day classes. This is a long, very structured class that does a few things for us. One, it trains our people. It teaches them our, our values, as you've heard. Um, but maybe technically more important, not really more important, but technically more important, they provide everything um, that these students need to be certified by the state of Idaho to be a 911 emergency dispatcher. We meet all of the requirements. That's why we're allowed to do this. We're an agency of a size that's allowed us to perform um, the same functions as the state of Idaho. And we do that through excellent leadership, and we do that through excellent training. So Cassie and Hank, I don't know who wants to go first, but looks like it's Hank. Sure. <laughs> 
Well, Darlene, thanks for being a, uh, I should have put myself on the schedule before you. So, <laughs> tough act to follow. So, for those of you in here that don't know me, my name's Hank Gummersall. I've been uh, with the agency just short of 10 years now, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of the, our training program for a little over a year. Um, over the last 10 weeks, I've had the great opportunity of training uh, Tanea, Darlene, Katie, and Maureen. Um, and they've been working hard to build that foundation they need to become a 911 dispatcher. From here, they'll spend the next 18 weeks working with various trainers, crafting their own version of becoming a kind problem solver. Being a dispatcher is a very complicated position. Very challenging, but if you peel it back, the most basic thing that we are as dispatchers is a kind problem solver. Families, thank you for coming today. Darlene said it, Chief Deputy said it, you guys are extremely important as, as part of this process. I can almost guarantee that the next 18 weeks of their lives is gonna be some of the most stressful, intense training that they have had or will have ever received. But it will be rewarding. So that's whether everyone's training is unique. So whether that's adjusting to shift work, learning how to cope with difficult calls, or just the high level of multitasking. The most valuable resource a trainee can have is a healthy support system from their loved ones. All right, trainees, know that everyone on the floor wants you to be successful. Don't be afraid to ask questions, Katie. <laughs> In fact, it is encouraged. That's one of my favorite things about Katie, is she is not afraid to ask questions. It shows that you're learning. And most importantly, uh, check in with your academy members and continue to foster the bond that you guys have created over the last 10 weeks. All right. I'm going to give you some advice, three pieces of advice moving forward. You're gonna feel you're gonna feel vulnerable. That's perfectly fine. Remember that vulnerability equals growth. And while it's uncomfortable, it means you're growing and learning. Next, don't be too hard on yourself. We're often our worst critics. If your trainer, Cassie, or I, Nicole, anyone else tells you that you're doing a good job, believe it. I often tell my trainees to have a field goal kicker mentality. And what that means is, if you miss a field goal, learn from it, don't dwell on it. Go back out and kick the game winner. And last, pay attention to yourself. Take care of yourself. Talk to someone if you need to talk. Exercise, go outdoors, play video games. Whatever it is that makes you happy, make sure you take time to do it. All right, now, in closing, trainees, I want you to remember this moment, specifically Tanea and Katie, because you don't have much uh, previous law enforcement experience. I want you to think about right now, in this moment, you don't even know how to enter in a traffic stop, right? So, three months down the road, when you're having a hard time during the training, I want you to reference this moment and think about how far that you have come. Truly, it's been a good, uh, been a pleasure working with the four of you. You guys give me a hard time. <laughs> I guess I deserve it. I don't think so, but you know, whatever. <laughs> and I'm very excited to work with you guys out on the floor. So I'm going to turn the time over to Cassie and uh, she'll have some good words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. 
hold there. Something to be said about going last is everything's already been said. So my notes I have written down, they've all covered it. So I don't have much left to say. Um, seriously, my first notes on here is a, a quote from Brene Brown. When I do these, I try to find a quote in Brene Brown. We call her Queen Brene because she's amazing. And I this time I picked the vulnerability one. So I have vulnerability is not knowing victory or defeat. It is understanding the necessity of both. It's engaging and it's being all in. And I don't know what more could be than being all in on a 10 week academy on 18 weeks of having someone um, grading and looking at and evaluating every move that you make um, for 10 hours a day um, as an adult, that's rough. <laughs> it really is because we come from places with our own experiences, our own previous careers, um, and now we're being asked to almost start over, even if it's something we've done before. I had prior dispatch experience. It's still different, and we have to be that sponge again, and it's not easy, and know that we know that. We don't expect you to be perfect overnight. Um, all we do is hope that you take that knowledge and you learn and you run with it and you become the very best emergency communications officer that you can be. Another one of my favorite um, themes from Miss Brene Brown is, uh, that goes along with vulnerability, it's asking for help and recognizing that we need help. And somehow, as adults, uh, we come to equate not needing anyone with success. Many of us are willing to extend any kind of a helping hand. We're willing to give people the shirt off of our back. But do we ask for that in return or anything? And sometimes you've got to do it. You have to ask for help for yourself. We've given you a lot of resources. We have a lot of classes based on taking care of yourself. Um, the skill part of dispatch is important, but none of that matters if you don't take care of yourself and stick around to apply those skills. So please don't hesitate to take all of that information with you, to lean on your family, to lean on your friends, um, your, your blue family and your, your blood family. Um, know that we are here from the top of the agency down all the way to the brand new person. We're all here for all of you. So please remember that. Um, and the final quote, of course, we don't have to go it alone. We were never meant to ever. So please reach out and help if needed. Thank you guys. It was amazing. Thank Hank for helping out. It was, it's been great to have um, someone here to help, uh, share the burden, share the joy, um, play pranks on. I finally, I was so juvenile. We, we go, <laughs> we got this nice big van now to be able to do our like geography tours and stuff. And so I had to go fill it up and I got it washed. And Hank was driving, so I cranked the radio up. I haven't done that since like high school. Turn the radio up, turn the windshield wipers on. It was awesome. I was so excited. I thought it was really fun. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's it's been great. I appreciate um, the patient of our students with with um, the changes and stuff that come up with academy and being in law enforcement. We never know what's going to happen, and we've had to adjust classes and move classes and and um, Obviously, people get sick, and and you guys were so patient and so kind and understanding, and just did what needed to be done to to learn and fill that time. And I appreciate it. So, thank you. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to. We don't present the certificates right now, but we are going to introduce you and um, thank our students. So, Darlene. Thank you. <laughs> Katie. <laughs> Tanea. <laughs> and Maureen. <laughs> so one of the things, one of the um, di distinctions, is that right, that we, we honor is the top student. So during the course of the 10 weeks, um, they take numerous tests. There's midterms, finals. They take a test to be certified through the um, emergency dispatch 
Academy as an emergency telecommunications officer. They have their post certification, so there's a lot of tests and book knowledge that goes along with that. And so we compile those scores and average, and our top student is Marie. <laughs> And I, she, she also holds the distinction of having our highest score ever with over a 98% average. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> very, very good. All right, so now our next award is the Vision Award. And Andrea will take that. So you've heard a lot about um, how we, you know, why it's so important that we uh, live, you know, live our values, not just what we say, but what we do. And so in addition to our class president, we also ask our students to select the recipient of what we call our vision award. And this really is um, choosing the, the trainee who most personifies our uh, values and the way that we bring our, say, please bring your best self to work each day, and what that best self work looks like. You've heard a little bit about her already. Um, this student is someone who is not afraid to ask questions, not afraid to challenge, not afraid to ask why, and we need that. You will hear us say that, you will hear it a lot, that we want you to want to know why we do things. And we want to always have the answer. May not be the answer you love, may not be the answer you expect, um, but that is how we maintain integrity and it's how we maintain trust. We expect the community to ask, we want to listen and learn, and we ask our employees to do that as well with each other, with us, and with members of our community. So I'm gonna read uh, the Vision Award because it does speak to what the fellow students uh, said. So the Sheriff's Vision Award says, your training coordinators and peers chose you to receive this award because you brought a positive energy to the Academy and helped to make us all better. Your enthusiasm about learning new things is an inspiration to your teammates. You readily share your knowledge patiently in a way that is easy for others to understand. You embrace the quirks that make you uniquely you and in doing so give others permission to live authentically and embrace their own unique qualities. We ask our emergency communications officers to be kind problem solvers. You took that request to heart by exemplifying the vision, mission, and values of the Ada County Sheriff's Office. So we will honor Katie Mullins with our Sheriff's Vision Award. Congratulations. And that is actually the end of our graduation ceremony today. We certainly ask that you stay, take pictures, we'll put the flags together, and give you a little bit of backdrop up here um, so that you can celebrate today. My words in parting, um, when you look around the room, those that work for the Sheriff's Office and those who don't, we're all here for the same reason. And we're here as servants to other human beings. That's what a Sheriff's deputy is. Keep in mind, I just swore you all in to uphold that, and to look out for your fellow man, regardless of race, religion, creed, any of that other crap that people use to divide us. We are all one person, and we all deserve the very best from each other. And our dispatchers start that process in many, many cases. Our dispatchers are the ones that answer the phone when somebody's tangled up in a car crash, when somebody's baby's not breathing or when a baby's being born. They start that process. Your voice on that phone in that moment of crisis is the most beautiful thing you're ever gonna hear. Thank you for joining our family. And that concludes the ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>